All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are going to get started. So um, today is May 8th, 2019. Um, we have a couple of us uh, from different uh, time zones joining. Uh, United States and um, other places in India that I actually know of. I'm not sure who else uh, from which zone has joined. So uh, right now I'm um, connecting from East uh, Coast, 2 p.m. EST. So um, I'm not sure if we have anybody who has joined the second time um, with our team. So this actually is our second uh, webinar. We had one uh, successful meeting. And we had very good feedback also on our uh, webinar. Many uh, showed a lot of interest and uh, it was pretty encouraging for us um, you know, to do this more. Uh, so we are going to continue this uh, diligently and um, you know, have uh, more presentations on uh, this particular subject matter, the WAPS. So today uh, we are going to um, talk, uh, I'm going to introduce you to Abhilash Isaac, who's going to be our um, presenter. Um, DevOps evangelist. Before that, I'm just going to give you a quick uh, review um, on who we are. So we are uh, based here in uh, Princeton, New Jersey, and our name is Kotira Canneries. We have a location um, back in um, Bangalore, India, and there we are named as um, Canneries. So we are one in the same company with just two um, different names for one um, entity. So we, um, we focus on um, uh, technical and functional skills. And uh, today the main focus is to talk about um, uh, you know, Azure DevOps. I'm just gonna get onto my slide. It's probably stuck, I think, give me one second. All right, so Fortira, as you see here, it's just a little um, information on um, where we are based. We actually uh, established ourselves uh, in 1996, and we've been doing business with uh, direct clients from all the domain, um, and uh, currently have about 250 active consultants here um, on site, and we have a uh, little more than 200 consultants uh, back uh, in off site um, as well. And together we have about 60 to 70 years of experience in com combination uh, from our uh, board of directors. So here, once again, this is to specify our uh, key focus on um, all the domain we cover. We, uh, we hold expertise with every domain, uh, whether it is technology based or function uh, functionality based or even including um, the offset from technology, which could be admin, executive uh, kind of skills as well in operations and accounting. So the current domains we cover is in IT infrastructure, financial and banking, pharmaceutical science, uh, insurance and healthcare, and we are also uh, expanding uh, with retail uh, industry as well pretty soon. We are working on our um, you know, papers now. And coming about the labor categories, um, I have uh, listed a huge uh, list here, but per se, in short, we cover combination of skills, niche skills, um, you know, functional and non-functional technologies in combination with um, pharmaceutical healthcare. Sometimes it, it, it never comes as one particular skill, so it comes as many domain as well as technical and non-technical skills com in, combined together uh, could be a requirement uh, from the client. So per se, we, uh, we, are, uh, we hold expertise with our niche skills as well. And we cover entire United States and hold capability to support anywhere uh, in any zone. Now, what kind of business do we support? We um, support project-based, product-based, and vendor management systems, which is nothing but managed services with uh, vendor management tools. So uh, it doesn't really matter whether it is a staff augmentation, one-on-one -on -one engagement, um, or a huge project-based engagement. So we support any kind, it's totally based on client need and client dictate. And then um, to make my speech really short, so that way we can focus more on uh, the subject matter we are discussing, we, um, you know, this particular slide that you see is something that we truly follow, um, you know, in terms of diversity, collaboration, and uh, bringing uh, incremental value to not just 
client, not just Potira Canaries, but also to our consultants and employees equally. So, so far we have um, been pretty successful um, with our business and we hope to grow more. And um, having said this, I'm just going to um, transfer this uh, to Abhilash to take over on uh, subject matter DevOps. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Mithila, for this introduction. I hope I'm audible. You are. Okay. Let me go and share my screen. I'm, are you able to sh view my screen? So in regard to the previous session, what we had the last time, uh, we saw the overview of DevOps, how we can accomplish from planning, tracking, and then the entire CI CD process, and then how we go ahead and deploy and then monitor. We have seen the end-to-end -end process of DevOps. So in today's session, we are going to look at how we are going to manage the project. This is basically a project management session and how we can uh, implement project management in using Azure DevOps. So to start off with, uh, just uh, this is the agenda which is being planned for today. In today's session, we'll be covering the overview of Azure boards, how we can manage our project efficiently, and then we're going to see how we can plan the sprints using Azure DevOps. We are also going to look at the Kanban boards as well as the task board, how we are going to manage the tasks, the product backlog items, and so forth. And also we have we, we can we have the dashboards and using the dashboards we'll be able to track and all the work which is being done by the individuals who are contributing to the particular project. Also we can customize the work items, we can generate queries, and we can pin, it, pin them down to the dashboards and see the sprint burn down and different different fields from the that are being used in the project management. So before that, let me just have a recap of what we uh, what DevOps is. According to Microsoft, DevOps is nothing but the union of people, process, and products who enable continuous delivery to value our end users. So when you talk about people, process, and products, I'll, I would like to give you an example. Uh, let us take an example of a construction. While building a, a building, we normally have the people. Uh, along with the people, we have the tools. And also, we have a certain process to be followed. So just imagine if we don't have the right tools to use and you just have the people as well as only the process. So everything should go hand in hand. The people should be able to use the right tools or if we, even if we have the tools and we don't have the right people to use the tools, we may not be able to accomplish DevOps. So this is exactly the definition of what Microsoft gives us regarding DevOps. And if we look into the end-to-end flow of DevOps, we see the planning where all the requirements are gathered and then it is sent to the development phase where the developers develop it, develop the code, they test it and then they release the product and then it goes ahead and it, it goes ahead to the monitoring stage where the product is being monitored and it's working efficiently or not. So to start off with project management, what exactly it is? Project management is nothing but it is a plan to track your goal. First, we specify a goal and then we build a plan so that we can achieve our goal. In between, we'll get to know where exactly do we stand in, achi in achieving this goal. So it is very essential for us to plan, track the entire workflow, what, the pro what our team is going for forward with. And we'll see what Azure DevOps has to provide in project management. If you look at 
this slide you see that we have Azure boards which completely includes project management which we're going to speak about a few minutes from now and then we have the Azure reports which gives us a version control system wherein we can version all the changes which have been made we have the Azure pipelines wherein we can do the build and then we can go ahead and deploy we have the test plans where where wherein we can we have the test case management and then we have the Azure artifacts where we can package all these uh, uh, test cases so that is an overview of DevOps so now let's get into Azure boards which which is a most important part of the project management in project management we see that we have to track our work and we also have to plan accordingly so that we achieve the end results in Azure DevOps we have Azure boards using these boards we can get to know what exactly our contributors are up to how efficiently are they working and and we can see how what work has been achieved what work has been completed and what work is still yet to be completed and we can plan accordingly so that in the next couple of sprints we may be able to achieve our goal next is we also have scrum boards and we also have uh, sprints and using which we can plan our day, daily activities as well as our uh, weekly sprints as well and then we have project insights which gives us uh, an overview of regarding uh, regarding our project so that wherein we can add that using some widgets we can uh, customize the dashboard and we can get a better pictorial view of what exactly is happening in our project so in order to see all these what we have discussed now let's see it in action so in the first place we have to come in in the first place we have to come into dev.azure.com and it brings us to the sign in page here i've already signed in if you have a microsoft account it will ask you for your credentials you can give in your credentials and you can sign in using your microsoft credentials now you see now if you see you have an organization this is my organization and on my left hand side you can see a list of organizations these are the organizations which i am a part of and this organization is my organization which i have created and i have a list of projects which are present in my organization so today i'll be showing you a demo on how we can uh, use project management in this particular project so I will be going into the parts unlimited store project which is already opened here and this gives me a complete summary of what exactly my project is talking about here it gives us a description where it describes the project what exactly it is all about and then on the right hand side you find the work items which have been created how many work items have been completed the pull request when it comes to the version controlling system what are the changes which are done and what, how the merge uh, how many merges have taken place and all the commits it will show the number of commits by different authors and uh, also the build and the deployment status as well so the summary page talks about con uh, consists of all these things then coming to the boards this is the most important feature of uh, project management when you when you see the boards you have a number of fields uh, below the boards and then the most important part is work items uh, when you come to the work item section you see all the work items which are being listed and these are work items in general is nothing but requirements given by the client in simple words so the work items are classified into various categories there are different types of work items you have we have the epic 
which is the high level work item so here we see epic this is the epic this is a high level work item which is a milestone in our project and then an epic can be divided into a feature and then a feature is again divided into a product backlog item and the product backlog item is divided into task you see all these are have us hierarchy all are interlinked within each other so unless and until you complete a task you will not be able to complete a product backlog item unless a product backlog item is completed a feature can't be completed and unless a feature is completed you you can't complete a epic so this is how the hierarchy is and uh, let's go ahead and create a work item also you have different views how you can classify your work items into into if in case you want to view your work items in the form of only features you can view them in the form of features if you want to view even the product backlog items you can view it in that field as well so, and there is no uh, limitation uh, as to it has to follow the similar order you can reorganize your work items maybe probably you can bring this work item to the top and you can rearrange it the, it just shows you the priority what you have to follow in which priority you should go ahead and do your uh, complete your work so this is about work items so let's go ahead and create a work item so imagine i want to uh, create a website And also these work items are not uh, you 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 can manually create it by directly clicking on this new work item and start adding it that is one option or if you want to if you have a list of work items already present in your excel sheet you can go ahead and import them as well so in order to create a work item from here we can select which work item we wanted to create and then we can go ahead and link it so this this is a product backlog item and uh, you see different fields here one is the title uh, hello abhilash yes i mean can i ask my question or we will keep it at the end of the session uh, it's better that we keep it at the end of a session okay. Fair enough, uh, so fair that enough. Okay. so so we'll just complete this uh, session and then at the end of the session I'll be able to answer all of our queries. Okay. 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 Thank you. So now, if you see, we have created two product backlog items one one is design us and ui and there's another duplicate which has also been created uh, there is an all option where and you can go ahead and delete your work item as well and when you uh, come to this design product backlog item you see different fields here and at, at present now it is not assigned to any of the ones present in our project and this you can see the state is currently new and if you need to add any kind of comments, you can go ahead and add any comments. And if you want to give a specific tag to which uh, field does it belong to, maybe is it re related to the web development or something, you can go ahead and give, give a tag. And then you also can give a description regarding the project, uh, sorry, regarding the work item, what exactly you're doing in this particular work item. 
and there are certain acceptance criteria which you have to if in case you have to follow so you need to follow this particular acceptance criteria and uh, while working on this work item and there's also a discussion forum wherein you can start a discussion or a conversation with one of your colleagues by mentioning their name and uh, to whom you are addressing it to for example you need for example i need to uh, address it to suraj so uh, you we can just start a small conversation like uh, can we give a dark theme or something like that and then we also have the business value and then we have the effort effort is nothing but it is basically the number of hours what uh, how many hours you're going to take to complete and also you have the priorities which priority does it belong to do you want to set it as the first priority second or a third or fourth it depends and then you have the development uh, portion wherein it gives you the end-to-end -end traceability if in case you have uh, any commits to this particular uh, work item and if you're creating a new branch and power committing it into that particular branch all uh, all the end-to-end -end, uh, commit history will be shown here in this development field and also you have a related work wherein you can add a particular uh, particular parent or a child so this is a bi-directional relationship so if in case you want to add a parent so you can search from a list of uh, work items so uh, i had already created a work item called as a website so i need to link it to this but i want to link this product i i am um, backlog item to this particular feature so i go ahead and link it so now you see a link is drawn between a product backlog item and a feature and uh, this all come under the details page these are all different pages so the next page gives you the history who created the back uh, the backlog item and when was it created was there any changes made and what uh, what are they working on and all these things will be uh, showcased in this particular uh, history tab and then if in case you have any links here we have a link connected to our feature so it shows you a parent relationship between them if in case you need to add any kind of attachments related to, to this particular work item you can go ahead and add this add an attachment so if in case i want so uh, suraj to uh, go through this and start uh, the designing his ui i can add an attachment or, or a file and then i can go ahead and uh, assign it to him so now i can this is such a field wherein we can uh, change the state of the work item and here i will be assigning this work item to suraj and uh, there's also another uh, feature wherein if in case you want to get notifications about this particular uh, work item uh, has it been completed or is it still in progress or any kind of new additions have been done you can always get a uh, notification on this from this by clicking on follow and then we can go ahead and save and close this so that's all that's about creating a work item and as and assigning it to a particular uh, individual so you can also view this entire work item in the form of boards so this is known as the kanban board uh, Kanban is a term which is der derived from Japanese is a Japanese term and if you see here you have we we have all the backlog items which are present here and uh, we also have different columns which are present 
showing that where, where which state is it in is it in whether are you in the design state or a development state or a, or or is the product backlog item in the done state so these are the different fields wherein we can start moving uh, these work items so basically if you see th this is a pictorial, pictorial representation of work items in the form of cards so these cards can be moved as and when it has been completed by the project manager manager so assume assuming me as a project manager now uh, i get to have a complete view of what exactly each person is doing in this particular project if we look at this particular uh, work item i see it is being assigned to abilash and uh, which path is it in whether we have uh, which area path there are different area areas in a particular project uh, the different teams for example you have the web development team you have the database team or you have uh, uh, the design team so based on that particular team you can see the work items where is it uh, where exactly it is being carried out and then you also have the priorities you can check it directly from here and you see you also see the number of tasks that are associated with this particular product backlog item so here uh, if in case that this, this particular task has been completed i can go ahead and i can uh, approve it and i can make sure that it is completed and then if in case this is also both the tasks are completed i can move this to the done state and uh, also if we see here these are all related to the product backlog items if you want to view it in the form of a higher level work item in the form of a feature you can view all these cards in the form of a feature as well or if you want to or if you want to view it in the form of epics we can view all these work items in the form of epics so this is this board plays a very important role in project management which gives a clear picture of how we can plan how we can track each and everybody's work which is which is carried carried out and also we see here there's a different uh, section which is which is completely separate from the from this section this is nothing but the swim lane swim lane is uh, you is nothing but we can give a particular lane for all the important work items for example uh, if we have a bug which has which has creeped up while uh, uh, from the previous print we have while doing a project we can immediately create a bug is created i create a bug and then i immediately place it in this particular lane and uh, and, as I, and i assign it to another person called as sai and uh, make sure that first he completes this so this severity is the priority is one so it indicates that this has to be completed first and then later he can go ahead and he can complete the other work which is being assigned to him so this way we can track we can plan out how we can how the work items can be uh, categorized how, can, how they can be segregated and the, how they can be uh, completed and also we see that uh, this is nothing but the work in progress limit so work in progress limit is nothing but we can set it according to the project so here it indicates that uh, there are four work, uh, there are four uh, work items still in the design state maximum we can keep a maximum number of 10 work items that is what it indicates you can have more than that for example if uh, if you have more than 10 it automatically indicates you in red so it shows that uh, your uh, team is not uh, working in a efficient way and there are a lot of work to be completed so that is about the swim lane Th this swim lane can be created in the you from the settings tab here we can using these fields we can customize the boards by adding different styles and colors and annotations and when you come here to the board section we can add different columns as well uh, 
as i mentioned we have the design we have the new we have the develop and test and done so if in case you want to add a column you can go ahead and add a column which is wherever we wanted for example if you wanted to have a column even after the design state you can go ahead and you can so if in case we have to go ahead and add a column before that since i have already selected a column i need to give a name and here I can also set the work in progress limit to 5 or 10 or 15 depending on the project so this is where we change the work in progress limit so if you see here we have created a column and we see that the column is already being placed here with a field name as review and the work in progress limit as five. So in this way, we can go ahead and we can uh, plan and customize the uh, Kanban boards. And uh, this is a section where you can add a swim lane. This is uh, the swim the swim lane. What we what I what we see here. This is this can be done using this uh, option. And then you can also reorder the cards and other things. And uh, we also have the cumulative flow chart, which indicates how much of work has been completed and uh, what work is still in the, develop, the developing or the testing phase and what work is still in the design phase. Based on the number of columns, the work done will be listed out and we can also view it in a graphical representation. And, and then coming to coming to the velocity chart. Uh, here we see our uh, project is being planned into different sprints. When you say sprints, sprints are nothing but time frame or a time period. Uh, using which we can accomplish uh, products at a very efficient ma in a very efficient matter manner you can have different kinds of number of sprints based on your particular project usually uh, in Microsoft we have uh, sprints for three weeks basically each sprint is for three weeks and uh, likewise depending on other uh, other projects you can have it for two weeks or four weeks something like that and you can plan your sprints accordingly. Now, if we see that we see our enough first sprint, it shows that the effort of work, that is eight, eight hours of work were accomplished in the first, first sprint. And then when you see in the second sprint, since the team was a little comfortable after working with the first sprint, the production of the work has increased to 15. And right now, currently we are in the third sprint. So when we come to the sprint it shows us that the first second is completed now currently we are in we are in the third sprint in in this sprint we see these are the product backlog items which are particular which are right now assigned and the individuals are currently working on and uh, we also see The backlogs we can also see it in the form of lists list and this is the task board just similar to the kanban boards wherein we can see all the tasks so in this task board we will not be able to see the high level work items and uh, here also we can this is where we plan our capacity of our team so basically i have uh, three members that is abilash Abila, Sri Lancha, and Sai. So each person is being assigned a capacity of five hours per day. The capacity per day is measured in five hours. And we also can uh, assign the activity 
you uh, on what kind of activity they are doing if they're into de designing we can give them a designing phase if they're into development we can give them into development phase but since here all three are into development i select the development uh, option and likewise we can also go ahead and add users as well if there's an, uh, another user who's missed out we can go ahead and add that particular user so if we see here in this capacity planning totally it shows us that uh, this print has started in on on may 3rd and it is scheduled to be completed on may 14th so there are still four days of work remaining so if we see here there are totally uh 8 13 and 18 totally 18 18 hours of work which is present here and uh for these four days we see that there is five hours the, then for these four days there is 90 hours of work which is which which this four days can complete 90 hours of work but then uh, in that 90 hours only five hours of work is being used and the remaining hours is left so it shows that still a lot of work can be added in this particular sprint so if we see in this development activity itself we see that all this uh, five hours of work is being accomplished if we if we if you need to add uh, another activity for example you need to add a design activity you can also specify this person this uh, person abilash to work has work for another three hours in this design activity so now if you see in this design field there are still no work which has been assigned so that is uh, that is how we do the capacity planning and uh, in in this particular sprint we also see all the users who are working who are currently being assigned work and uh, right now there is no work which has been assigned to abilash and he it indicates that i uh, there is the, there can be more work which can be assigned to him but another person for him already five hours of work is being assigned and uh, still 25 hours of work is still left out so that is how we plan our capacity and uh, coming to the task board if we see uh, this design is currently assigned to oh, suraj but he is still not yet uh, added into the capacity planning since this work has been assigned to him now i go ahead and i add him here and for in a day this is a capacity per day he will be able to work for around eight hours and he'll be working under the design field so now if you see that uh, there is a change in this particular hours of work because uh, we have an additional work which is being added and uh, this is calculated for the for the next remaining four days as well so, so likewise we can go ahead and we can plan our sprint and there is also something known as the burn down graph burn down graph it shows the uh, sprint the the sprint planning uh, here it shows as you see this green line present here it it always indicates that your work shouldn't exceed beyond this green line so as and when initially you will be assigning a lot of work in the initial stage but in this sprint since there is no much work to be accomplished we haven't assigned much so generally there is a lot of work which is being assigned in the initial phase and as and when the work gets is completed the graph starts taking uh, uh, it, it starts it starts going down so if you see here uh, initially the work which was being assigned it was it took uh, it took a steep rise and then as and when the work started uh, comp completing the graph started declining so it shows that we we are uh, the our team is still they have still uh, our team has not kept any work pending for the next uh, 
four days which is which is uh, and it also shows that the amount of work is not exceeded this particular graph now if we see here uh, there is one task which has been already completed by Praveen as well as Sai so now here it's if you see the effort here which is eight so it shows that eight hours of work has been completed and uh, here there is still five hours of work which has been uh, left out by Abhilash and uh, he, he, this work has just been assigned to Suraj but it is not yet been carried out which is still left to be uh, started which is still left to be started and uh, this can be seen this data can be seen under the velocity chart which shows us that the eight hours of work has been com completed and there is still three hours of work which has been left so now if we come to this print you see here that there is out of eight five as uh, there is still three hours so here there is still five hours of work which is left from out of eight hours of work so that is what it indicates and here it also shows that eight hours of work has been completed sorry here three hours of work has been completed here okay and now we can also mention how, uh, the effort how long does it take to complete this particular task for example he takes around 10 hours of work so here you can go ahead and Add a new task for Suraj and uh, stating that you need to add a login page. And you can assign it to him and give Maybe he takes around five hours to complete this. So now if you so now if you go and check this into committed and maybe he is doing it in progress. you will find the difference in this graph. So totally there are 13 plus eight, that is 21 uh, hours of work, which is being planned in this sprint. Eight hours has been completed and uh, there are still there is still 13 hours of work, which is being left. So this is how we do the sprint planning. And then we come to the query section and in the query uh, we can generate different kinds of queries related to our work item uh, based on what kind of data we want to uh, see or based on what kind of data we want to fetch and uh, make sure what exactly is happening so here we will select the field as work item type or you can we can also select another field another uh, all other fields which are present but in this case we'll let us select the work item type and uh, the state what uh, which state the work item is in and uh, 
may if I if in case I need to select uh, all the active active or all, all the work items which are completely in the done state I can generate a query for it and uh, we can also see which work item we want to select that is whether is it a task is it a feature or epic so in this case i will be selecting a task and i would like to see all the tasks which are in the done state in this particular query so now when i run this query i see all these tasks which are complete which are completed which are in the done state and now i can go ahead and i can give this query i will give this query a name and I would like to add this to my shared queries. So now my query is being saved and if I go ahead to the charts, I can view it in the form of charts as well. If I want to see to whom is it assigned to so I can get to know all the work items which are completed which are in a done state and I can also see to whom it is being assigned to. So we can also select different kinds of charts using which we can see this data and uh, you see this uh, query has been uh, has been generated you can also uh, add this query now and pin it to the dashboard so here we have different teams so right now i am using the parts unlimited store team so i'd like to add it to this particular Teams dashboard. So when I come here to this dashboard dashboard section, I get a pictorial representation of all the uh, details in a in the form of signboards. As as you see, we had created a uh, query, and this query has been pinned to the dashboard. Likewise, we also can see different kinds of uh, details. Of the project what exactly is happening uh, all the work items all the user stories uh, uh, which are being assigned to a particular person and in the form of graphical representation way we can also see a particular work item which has been assigned assigned to a particular person and uh, if in case there are any unfinished work it also shows the number of work items here present here and if in case you need to add any kind of other uh, uh, other widgets you can add i can add this in by clicking on edit and there are a list of widgets you can choose from so basically this uh, dashboard is filled with widgets which gives you the description of all the all the things which are happening in your project so that you can be able to track and monitor different changes so here we can also see the burn down graph if you if you want to add it we can add it and then uh, we also can see the build history and uh, different other widgets as well depending on what exactly your project uh, uh, as to how your how your project has to look and what are the details you want to view in what's happening in your project depends upon that so as we have config as we have added two widgets we can configure it so right now we select a build pipeline and since there are there is there are, there is no pipeline which has been created it shows no builds and uh, here you can also see the burn down graph which we selected so 
for which iteration do you want to select you can uh, you can select it currently we are in the sprint 3 so it shows you the uh, burn down graph and how much work has been completed and so forth so this is about the dashboards and uh, dashboards are role based so basically uh, different teams for example you have a testing team you have a web development team each team can have a dashboard of their own and they can customize it according to their requirements and they can display it so that it becomes easy for the uh, it becomes easy to view all all the fields and different uh, activities that are taking place in the in this particular in in their particular project and uh, we also see the analytic 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 views which is uh, essential for generating the power bi reports and all these things also there's a wiki page which is uh, present where uh, a brief description about the project is is, is mentioned here so that uh, the contributors can go ahead and they can uh, start uh, can have a reference regarding what exactly has to be has to, has to be done so a small uh, content can be written here so that the developer who is working on that particular task if in case he's facing any issues he can come ahead and refer this wiki page so this is about how we can plan how we can track and manage different activities that are taking that are taking place in our particular project so apart from this this is the most important thing uh, when we in a devops environment when we start to start in order to start our uh, to, to start our work it's important to plan and then track how well we are going forward in accomplishing our goals so this is all about project management in azure devops so I think if there are any questions to be addressed. We can go on. Okay. Uh, Abhilash, uh, my name is Prashant. Uh, yes, I have Prashant, just one. Hi. Yeah, one doubt. Uh, so in the backlogs you showed without closing uh, the child work item types, we cannot close the parent work item type. So I don't think uh, that feature is uh, enabled uh, in Azure DevOps and uh, I think we have to create a rule or something like that for that. So can you show an example where we can close uh, parent work? Uh, uh, we cannot close a parent work item without closing the uh, child work item type. Yeah, without closing the child I, uh, child item, you will not be able to complete the parent item. For example, here uh, when you come to the so unless and until you complete this uh, particular bug or okay. a particular, for example, you take uh, a particular. Uh, let me see. Okay, you have a task here for this particular yeah. work item, right? So right. unless right. until you come so every developer works at the task level So every right. task is being assigned to a developer unless and until he completes this task He will not be able to mark this backlog item as complete So if this backlog item is complete it indicates that even the feature is also completed because it has only one backlog item and if no, the but, uh, is you, you can uh, click on to back, uh, product backlog item and you can still mark it as completed without uh, uh, So that's my uh, that's what I have observed. Maybe I am wrong. You can just try it out uh, You mean to say that you can mark it as yeah. done. Yeah, you can mark, yeah, mark it as done Yeah, you can close yeah. it save it. You can, you can save it, as... it Done yeah save and close it yeah, so it is it is it just closes see star status is in still do but we will be still able to mark the product backlog item is as done so the narration of uh, <laughs> I mean without closing the child work item types we can close the uh, Parent work item type so that is the feature in ADO. Yeah, yeah, uh, actually uh, yes, oh 
if in case if unless and until we uh, it, it it depends upon which environment you're working on for example if uh, a developer says that he has not uh, he will be completing the task so the project manager he has to show that he has completed tasks that uh, the product backlog backlog item is completed so keeping that in mind what he does is he just he moves it to the done state and uh, also ask him to co complete complete the task so that he doesn't have to maybe if he's going on a long vacation or something he says i will be moving it to a uh, done state and then he will ask him to complete it as soon as possible and move it to the done state so yes that in that case it is uh, permissible no. Yeah, whatever it is, we will not be able to close the pair. We will be able to close without uh, closing uh, the child work item types. So yes. that's all the point. Was. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? I think if we don't have any more questions, can we wind up the call? If in case if there are any questions that if need to be addressed, you can definitely uh, contact us. And uh, the okay. I also see a few chats which are in. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I will ask one more thing. Uh, in general, I'm asking. Uh, uh, there are uh, there are more companies which are planning to uh, move to Azure DevOps. Uh, from Jira to Azure DevOps or TFS to Azure DevOps. There are a lot of tools available in the market uh, while we are migrating from TFS to Azure DevOps, which we are already done successfully. Uh, but uh, from Jira to Azure DevOps, when we try, it is kind of challenging. So are you aware of any of the tools or anything like that, uh, which is more compatible uh, from, from migrating from Jira to Azure DevOps? Okay, do you have any suggestions? Um, any tools migrating from Jira to Azure DevOps, right? Yeah, right. Um, basically, uh, I think uh, as far as I'm concerned, Jira is a project management and test case management tool, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so here uh, using few extensions using few extensions uh, there there is a possibility to migrate onto azure devops so that can be done uh, by going to the marketplace azure devops marketplace and you can uh, add those extensions using those extensions we can migrate it onto azure devops no, and that's not that much easy uh, and uh, it's, there is no Microsoft recommended tools also for that. I don't think so anything. I have done a lot of research. Anyway, that's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll figure it out. Uh, thanks. Abhilash. Okay, and uh, also looking into uh, user story since we are using this uh, as a we are using a scrum template in this particular uh, demonstration. We were we are not able to find the user stories here. The user stories are nothing but the product backlog items. So basically in while creating a project, it gives us uh, an option. Uh, for, for example, here I come to my organization. If I in case I need to create a project, it gives me an option to select different templates. The agile scrum CMMI and basic so they basically there are four templates and uh, here based on the template what we choose 
we'll be able to see the the fields so since i've chosen a scrum template i was able to see uh, product backlog items likewise if we select uh, an agile template uh, the product backlog items will be named as user stories in the agile template and also you we have the version control two types of version control we can either select git and tfv or tfvc so based on the project requirement and uh, that is about uh, the user stories I see that Ashwak Mohammed has asked another question how to look into the workflow and also there's another question will it be possible to tweak changes in the workflow from UI yes that is that is possible and how to change process template from agile to CMMI are we allowed to change in the middle of the project uh, there while creating a project it is uh, the best way to select a template a process template but uh, according to the question are we allowed to change uh, in the middle of the project uh, no it is not all, uh, allowed to change but however uh, we can customize it we can inherit that particular uh, 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 process template and then you can customize you can maybe the fields the fields vary from each process template to process template those fields can be customized those fields some fields can be added some fields can be uh, neglected and used so how uh, to change the process template middle of the project I think that is not the recommended practice and uh, that's about the process template So I think these are the questions which uh, have been answered. And uh, also we are running out of time. So if in case I also see another, how can I import type in CMMA which is not there in agile uh, there is there is no option to import type in CMMI but uh, as I said right you can there is a an option wherein you can uh, inherit the process template and change it according to your see, uh, as you see here i have a uh, temp i have a uh, process template my agile too so that is a kind of uh an in inherited template where i have customized it according to my requirement and i can start using it So I think it is almost done and if in case there are any more queries please do feel free to write down so that we can address all these queries. And. Uh, Okay, hi, this is uh, Mithila again, um, Abhilash. I'll just take one second. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you for your uh, presentation. And, um, you know, whoever is on um, call today, I, we, our team, Abhilash and myself and the rest of the team, uh, thank you for actually joining us and giving your time in going through this uh, process. 
impossible if you could uh, please uh, pen back your feedback on how this went and you know what you would like to see from us and you know we will be more than happy to improvise our uh, presentations and also cater it uh, also to a certain extent to what you'd like to see so any information would be encouraging and uh, help us present it more better and meet your need um, we have i think uh, a lot of people coming last call it was a variety of people we actually had uh, senior vice presidents um, directors some students and uh, somebody who is actually trying to switch on to devops like a totally new different line so um, i'm not sure uh, what kind of crowd we have today but any feedback from your end will help us improve ourselves and also help you um, look into what um, you're looking for Okay, so that's about it. And we are looking forward to send the information about the next uh, session soon. So do send a word to your network as well if anybody is interested to join us again next month. So that's about it. Thanks, Abhilash. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mithila. And uh, you can get in touch with us. And you can also write to info at fortera.com and for any other any further, further query so that we'll be able to address and assist you. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Abilash.